Hi, this is Steel Nation, a trade paperback published by Valiant Comics. In 1994, this collects issues one through four of Magnus Robot Fighter. Magnus Robot Fighter was the uh, first title of Valiant's foray into superhero style comics. And I picked this up, I want to say March of this year, in a shop I like to go to in the um, Palm Beach County area. And um, it was a good price, and I like these comics, so it, the price was pretty good. So I decided just to pick it up and see how it reads after 32 years of the initial publication. So the first eight issues of Magnus Robot Fighter were written by Jim Shooter and with the art by Art Nichols, and anchors were Bob Layton and Catherine Bollinger. And this came out. This has a cover date of May 1991. And at least with these first eight issues, they tried to stay true to like the spirit of the Russ Manning style art from the 50s. And if you're not familiar with this character, these were part of the uh, Gold Key comics that were published, I believe, in the either late 50s or early 60s. And um, Russ Manning, the legendary artist, um, this might be his best known work or one of his best known works, um, the character of Magnus Robot Fighter. And so when this book came out, you could tell that they really wanted to kind of keep it true to the spirit of Russ Manning. And I think they did a good job. Art Nichols did the art. And Art Nichols is a person who did just a lot of inking, did some pencils here and there, but really wasn't like a big name. And I was surprised because the art here is very good. Um, you could tell it's like old school, trying to capture that Russ Manning vibe a little bit. And, um, but the art is good. A lot of details with all this machinery and all these robots. Um, coloring's good. Good acting, good storytelling. And I know that the Valiant comics get a lot of uh, crap, but, you know, and I know Jim Shooter is a persona non grata in comics, so he's probably like John Byrne, he's burned every single bridge in comics you can. But Jim Shooter had a long career of a few decades um, of being a good comics writer. It's when he became editor-in-chief and started running things that um, things went south for him as far as his reputation just being really difficult to work for. Um, but this was a good story. Um, basically, it takes place right after... Uh, the original Magnus Robot Fighter series. Magnus is this human being that was trained by this robot who has free will uh, to be the perfect physical specimen. And his job is to go out and find robots that are achieving free will and that want to destroy humanity. And so, you know, th that's, that's his deal. And that's how it starts off, where he's like just a good soldier and um, he's going to like, you know, destroy these robots. And the thing is, these robots, that, there's something that happens that causes a small portion of these robots to attain free will or just be sentient. And it's funny because the humans are worried that these robots are just come over and like just take them over. And some of these robots are like, hey, listen, we, we should have peace. And some of these robots are like, no, 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 no. We got to take care of these humans. We got to get rid of them because once they find out that we're around, they're going to want to dismantle us all. So it, 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 this came out after Terminator about that whole thing where you have um, machines become sentient. But those kind of vibes, that kind of storyline is still very much relevant today. Um, so the thing th that I liked is that there's a lot that happens in these books. And these stories were like 28, 29 pages each. There's a lot of comics there. And um, it starts off where Magnus is like this good soldier. And then later on, he starts thinking twice about having to kill all these robots, especially if they've attained free will, just because he's protecting um, humanity, who he's starting to de increasingly dislike because they're dependent on robots. They're lazy. They um, have no motivation. Um, he doesn't really, he's like thinking like, almost like, which side is worse? Um, and it strains his relationship with his girlfriend, who's this really vapid, 
very plastic type of um, spoiled child. He starts developing a relationship with this one robot, W23. And, you know, you have a lot of great action sequences here. And as the story progresses, um, he starts really questioning, like, his role, like, of being humanity's protector. Like, you know, almost like, I don't want the robots to kill the humans. But at the same time, these humans aren't, like, the, the best people either. And I'm protecting them. So it's kind of interesting. Um, questions about, you know, what happens when a robot attains um, being sentient, um, trying to find their self, how some would be, you know, how humans, especially in this day and age, are sort of like really unprepared because they're coddled. This is takes, takes place in the year 4001. Um, and so, uh, but the art here is really good. Like, I love this one silhouette sequence here of a battle like i said there's a lot of detail um here and here but there's outdoor scenes that are good so the art is you know it's good i mean this isn't flashy jim lee or uh, john byrne but it's good solid art um it looks like there's a lot of time given some of these covers are excellent um uh, it, it, I find that some artists just aren't really good at covers, but some of these covers, and they're like, they give that 50s Russ Manning vibe, you know, with like his uniforms are partially torn and he's like bent back and you got this menacing robot. And then you have this screen where you have like his girlfriend in peril. And um, by the end, Magnus changes as a person. And a lot of people do. So a lot happens in these stories. And so for 23 years later, um, there's, there's a, this is still, I thought it was pretty good. I was actually surprised that I liked it this much. Um, like I said, the themes of robots um, obtaining free will, uh, how humans um, would, you know, respond to that. Um, when these robots attain free will, like, what's their idea of self? Uh, this guy who's a, Agnes, who's a good soldier questioning their role and just killing because even though the robots that attain free will aren't flesh and blood he's thinking well they're still like alive they're still beings um this cover is great like i said there's a lot of detail a lot of great action sequences some things are far away some things are really close up like this is from madness's eye view this is a great splash page so um I don't think this is very expensive. I don't know what the back, how the back issues are, but if uh, you come across this and you've ever read them, or if you come across this trade and it's, I don't think it's very expensive. Um, I paid nine ninety five for this, which is the cover price. I, I don't think it's much more. Um, these are pretty good reads. If you hadn't read these um, in a long time, I would go ahead and check them out because I think they read pretty well considering it's over 30 years. Um, it kind of reminded me that Jim Shooter was a good comics writer um, and he had a large body of work. So that's really it. Um, like I said, good book. Um, not really too expensive, but a nice uh, trip down nostalgia lane. Anyway, thanks.